Hey, so now we've got a funky little list controller. We can click on elements and we can see details on the right hand side. But it's a, just a big list of data. If you want to find the data that we want, we just have to scroll and read and find. So what do we want with lists of things? Well, we want to have a search or, or an ability to search within them and have, have the data set reduced somewhat. So now we're going to add a search, a row above with some search controls. And inside those search controls, I want to be able to search by the name or by the email of the user and have the just have the, the, the number of rows reduced. So to start this off, let's go to our HTML file and I'm just gonna add in the top another row. So I'm just gonna copy and paste some code in. Okay, this is our code, so we added another row. It's a col 12, which means that it takes up the full width and it's a form with a search icon. But the important bits here is there's two input controls. One which I'm gonna use to search for the name and the other one I'm gonna use to search the email. We have to run it. There we go. So now we've got uh, just two input controls, one for name and one for email. But none of us, it's not doing anything right now. We need to link this up to some search functionality. So let's head back to the code. I now want to start going into our controller again. So in main.js and I'm just at the top going to add another scope variable called search. And we'll come back to this in a second, but let's go into our HTML again. I want to bind those input controls to a variable on the search object. So let's add some ng models in. I'm going to go for this one, which is the name. I'm going to do search.name. And for this one, which is email, I'm going to do search.email. And just so we can see what's going on at the bottom of the page, uh, just under the panel that we have on the right hand side, I'm going to add one of our little pre tags. And I'm just going to render out the actual search variable from our scope. So let's take a look. So there's a little pre panel on the right hand side. And yep, as I add some details, stuff appears there. But we're still not doing any searching. So let's just add that in. In fact, that is really simple in Angular. So I'm just going to show you now if we go into the ng repeat loop here. At the end of that, I'm going to add another pipe. And it's actually called filter, which I know I've been calling these things filters before. But this one, this filter is actually called filter. And what I'm going to do in this filter is I'm actually going to pass into it our search objects. So filter is a special angular filter, which takes the person's array, passes it through this function, and then will return a person's array with some filtering applied to it. Now it has its own little set of rules. Uh, you can pass in strings or objects or functions. We're passing in an object of our object of search, and it's then going to do a match for the name and email or whatever we have on the search object to the each person in the person's array. So let's just jump back into our main.js so I can show you. So if our search.name matches the person.name, it will include it. And if our search.email matches the personal email, it will include it. So that should just work straight out of the bag. So let's try it out. Let's refresh here and I'm just going to type Greg. There we go, Gregory Hoffman. And it should just also, if I go in the email box and I type some email address, I'm going to do pray. There we go. Now, if we use the built in Angular uh, filter function, it also gives us some nice little extra syntactical features for searching. So if we actually type in the exclamation mark before any search, it will do the opposite of that search. And we can do the same for the email, for the, sorry, the name. And actually what you might be seeing is that it's not doing a case, it's doing a case insensitive search. It doesn't care that our case is the same. And actually it's not even doing a beginning of the string search. It'll actually search anywhere inside the string as well. But this isn't a great user interface. I don't like having to give the user two boxes, one to search the name and one to search the email. I want one box, one input box, where it will search every field on uh, the person objects. 
So again, there's a pretty nifty shortcut in Angular to do that. I'm just going to show you now. So if you go back to the HTML and let's go into our input controls. I'm actually going to remove the second one, the email. We're not going to need that anymore. And instead of search.name, I'm actually going to do search dollar. So this is a special syntax which is accepted by the filter function here. So if you pass in an object with a parameter of dollar sign with some value, it's just going to search for every attribute on every object inside persons. And if any of those attributes match, it's just going to return true. And we can demonstrate that from here. So let's refresh the page. I'm going to type in A. So you see it's dollar sign A is there and it's returning every single entry with A. So as I keep on going through, you can see it's that. And it, you can also see that it's returning on the email as well. And again, we, the not still works. But this search box still isn't really good enough for me, for what I want, for my users. When they're searching, their case is important. So we want to do a case sensitive search and also from the first part of the name onwards. I don't want to search to match if it matches the middle part of the name or the middle part of the email. So we can do that again relatively easily. Let's go back into our HTML and instead of passing filter a search object, I'm going to pass in a function. So I'm going to call this function sensitive search. And at the same time, I'm going to go back into our input field and instead of binding it to an object value called dollar, uh, so an object property called dollar, I'm actually just going to bind it to search directly. And then let's go into our main.js. Now search isn't going to be an object. I just want to search on a string here. So I'm just going to change that. And let's just add our sensitive search function. So this function is going to get called for each object in the person's array and it's just going to pass in a person, an individual person object and it expects you to return true if it's a match and you want to show it or false if it's not a match and you don't want to show it. So I'm just going to copy and paste some code in here and then I'll explain what it does. So what we're doing here is we're if someone has entered some value in scope.search, only if they've actually typed something in will it execute this block. And what we're saying here is if the scope.search is in person.name, so index of returns the index of the scope.search as it appears in person name. If it doesn't appear in person name, it will turn minus one. If it appears at the very, very start of person name, so character by character from the start, the index of will be zero. And the same goes for email. So if the scope.search matches the first part of the person's email, it will return zero again. So if either of those are zero, we want to return true. So that's what this block does here. Or if we haven't even, if no one's even entered anything in scope.search, it's just, it's just always going to be true. You want to show the full list. So let's go into our code here again. And let's type Greg. There we go. And if we should, yep, so we are case sensitive now. And um, we should also be checking the email. There we go. And again, case sensitive on the email as well.